All right, Shane, next on the docket, you know, running down the elite teams in the country here, Alabama, 42, <laughs> Ole Miss, 21, and this game was not even as close as the final score indicated. What kind of dumbass thought yeah. Ole Miss was going to win this one? You know what I mean? Exactly. One second. Let me grab my popcorn. I want to hear your excuse <laughs> on this one. <laughs> Oh, man, I, I, it's rat poison, and I, Nick wants to destroy Lane Kiffin, and that was clearly <laughs> obvious during this game. And kudos to – I'm telling you, when, when Ole Miss came out and they took the ball all the way down there, I thought we had something. Mm -hmm. And I just don't realize – I don't think anyone realizes just how crucial that drive was, the fact that they marched all the way down there and was able to get zero points off of it. I think that right there just broke their back and their momentum because Alabama had no trouble moving the ball against these guys. But there was just uh, – it felt like, I don't know, like you just released a, a big breath of air and it's just like you could feel it in that stadium like, golly, mm -hmm. these guys are not the same teams. Right, and that drive you referenced, Shane, 16 plays, 59 yards, ends uh, inside the five-yard line, I believe. Uh, Ole Miss drive chart – I mean, it's tough to look at, Shane. It downs, downs, punt, downs, fumble, yeah. half. And, I mean, it was just an ugly, ugly show for them. Whereas, on the flip side, we're looking at Alabama. Touchdown, touchdown, punt, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean they are a damn machine. They – I think they enjoyed it, all the, all the dumbasses like myself question them. You know, like, like it almost seemed like a personal yeah. challenge. And this defense that I was uh, calling out all damn week, they answered the bell and made the team that I thought had the best offense in the country, made them look like one of the, I don't want to say one of the worst teams in the SEC, but uh, mid-tier at best because Ole Miss had very, very little going. Uh, you know, I, I thought – Matt Corral, not that he like looked terrible or anything, but uh, mm -hmm. you know he didn't he didn't get much help and he didn't make much of a difference in this one. There was there was no slowing down, and it's kind of goes back to what I almost the same deal as uh, you know, the Arkansas Georgia game. I think Alabama looked at it same deal. Ole Miss are going to try to keep everything in front of them. They don't have any difference makers on the defensive line. Let's just ground and pound their ass. And Brian mm -hmm. Robinson answered the bell. My Jeez. good, he looked like Derrick Henry out there, Shane. 36 <laughs> carries, 171 yards, four touchdowns. He's going to be SEC Player of the Week, I have to think. And uh, we did. I mean, Bryce Young was good, but we didn't even need him in this one, did we? No, no, that you didn't. And I was thinking as I was watching this game, I was like, how long has it been since Alabama had a Heisman? at running back because <laughs> I think they got real potential. If they keep leaning on Robinson like they're doing early in this season, mm -hmm. don't be surprised if you have some of those Derrick Henry comparisons at the end and, and, and making his name on the ballot because the kid is impressed. I mean, it was just total domination. Now, I got again, again, I love giving credit to the running back, but also I got to give credit to that offensive line. There oh, was yeah. so much push. I mean, some of these holes I could have ran through, Mike. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I think we put to bed a little bit about how much this Ole Miss defense has improved. But you can't slip on you can't sleep on these Rebels. They still were able to score points against Alabama. They're still going to score points against a lot of teams that they play. It's just Alabama shows you. I mean. Right now, I don't know what you think, Mike, but it, it feels like there's two teams in the SEC, and this is one of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, without a doubt, it, I think it's summed up perfectly by uh, Lane Kiffin in the post game. He says, well, hell, 31. He's talking about the outside linebacker, Will Anderson. He'd mm -hmm. be the first overall pick if he was eligible. He's only a sophomore. And then he says, well, hell, their left tackle, I forgot. He'll be the first pick. So they got two <laughs> first overall picks on their on their team. And that's what it felt like because that's all they did. They ran behind Evan Neal and, and Brian Robinson took over. Uh, how do you think, Shane, after Ole Miss's hot start, you know, they got Arkansas next week. That is going to be an epic game, probably the best game in the SEC. There, there's no time for either one of those programs, Ole Miss or Arkansas, to feel bad about themselves. They got to pick themselves right up off the ground and play a, a heated, heated SEC West game. Do you, which one, if – I don't know. I mean, do you think both of those teams can get up for it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I, again – Ole Miss 
went in there expecting to beat Alabama, and I love the heart, but mm-hmm. when it what it boiled down to is just Alabama was that much more talented on both sides of the ball. This was all about defense and the running game. Mm-hmm. So I, I think if anything, they can highlight some of the mistakes they made during this ball club or, or this ball game and, and improve on it. Because like I said, Ole Miss has still got a very aggressive, dangerous offense, and I don't care what team they play. If they're on, if they hit it perfect, the, whoever they're going against is going to suffer. If you come in limping against an Ole Miss team, you're going to get your ass beat. And I'll tell you what, Shane, that Gary Danielson, he's got him a new man crush, doesn't he? Henry Toa <laughs> Toa had to hear about that every damn uh, you know time he went up to the line of scrimmage. Oh my God, he he loves him. I. I, I for, <laughs> Good for him, you know. I mean, whatever. Let's just leave it at I, that, I, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've I've done I've done had enough stuff on me this week, Mike. Come on, I ain't got to worry about Harry T down there, Henry T and uh, Harry T. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. <laughs> oh, Gary down there and his love, yeah, man crush. So no, let's 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 move on. We got more teams to talk about. Well, you know, we really, I think that going for something like I don't know, twelve or fourteen fourth downs you know, up to this point. And um, so we really sold our players on the fact when it's third down and seven, it's really third down and three and a half. And they're going to go for it on fourth down with any kind of field position at all. So you got to have the mindset that you're going to play two third downs. And uh, we did a lot of the same things on the fourth downs that we did on third downs. And the players just did a good job of executing it. Um, And you know, it uh, it worked out well for us. So, not that we did anything different. Uh, I think the whole game plan was a little bit different in terms of our approach, not to try to play as much situational football because of, you know, the way they play on third down. Uh, Nick, how would you describe how your defense played overall and, and uh, why did you have so much success, especially early? Well, I thought they played really well, especially in the first half. I mean, I don't know, they had – 100 yards or something. Now, we kept the ball a lot on offense, which is part of the plan, too. And uh, got some critical fourth down stops. And, um, you know, probably in the second half, didn't play quite as well. Uh, Maybe needed to make some more adjustments or something. Uh, But we also mis-executed some things that allowed them to make plays. So, um, and, you know, you give them opportunities, they're going to make some plays. They got that kind of team, that kind of offense. But other than the way we finished the game, uh, I thought the defense played extremely well. That was certainly statistically Brian's best, Brian Robinson's best game. What did he have extra today? What what enabled him to have that kind of performance? Well, we gave him the ball 32 times because it was part of the plan. Jace got hurt or would have played Jace more uh, in the game. And, you know, I've always been one of those guys when a runner is running hot, run him. And uh, he was running hot today, so uh, we ran him, and he he delivered. Uh, For the most part, he did a really, really good job. And uh, not only the offensive line did a good job of blocking him up front, but he pressed it and made the right cuts. And then he was difficult to tackle and got a lot of extra yards after first contact. Finish up. You know, I thought about it towards the end of the game. Coach Saban said a year ago, he felt like afterwards it was like every call was like the right call that we had and everything went our way. And I felt like that today for them, you know, defensively, like, you know, we go speed option on fourth down and, you know, number 10 makes a great play and catches Ely and Ely tries to cut back for some reason. So um, credit them for showing up, making a lot of plays. Wayne, those uh, two fourth downs inside your own territory, do you think you would have gone for those against any opponent, or, or do you think playing Alabama influenced that decision? No, that's actually opposite. If anything, I mean, 100% you go for it. And if, you know, that's the other way. A lot of people would don't do it because it's like scared money. You know, when blackjack table, you got $5, it's easy, you know put a couple of thousand out there now you get scared and so I said we weren't going to do that we were going to follow the analytics follow the book and not get scared because we're in Alabama and you know not have confidence in our players and punt because again you can punt and then go score they scored every possession but one in the first half so um, you know I know it looks bad when it doesn't work but again 
you can punt it away and it just takes longer for them to score. Quick follow up to that. I mean, you've been coaching for a long time after kind of a loss like this when you guys were rolling. What's kind of the key to kind of boost morale in the, in the locker room with, with players afterwards after a game like this? You know, make sure we understand it's one game and um, there was a lot of hype and build up for the game. And, you know, it, it, you know, one game does not define your season. You know, it doesn't define you, it molds you. So you can go one way or the other. And I think in a way, as much as it hurts during it, it's kind of sometimes better when a game's like this versus last year where you're sitting and saying, oh, one play, and then you got a hangover, you know, and go play like we did against Arkansas. So hopefully this refocuses and shows us, you know, how we got to do everything right.